Do you want to use a graphical identity plate in the print module, but feel unsure of how to make one? And are you concerned that if you do make one, it might not look good on your print? If you answered yes to either of these questions, then keep watching. In my last video, I showed you how to make a professional gallery print using the print module in Lightroom. However, in the interests of time, I had to gloss over exactly how you make a graphical identity plate. In today's video, I will remedy that and I will show you exactly how to make a graphical identity plate in Photoshop that you can use in Lightroom. When you want to make a graphical identity plate, you really need to think about the size of the prints that you're going to make. Are you going big? Oh, you really should, because big prints just look wonderful. But you also might be wanting to look at a mid-sized print. So how big do you think that your graphical identity plate needs to be in order to look good on these prints? In any case, you want your logo to look good and not be jagged while the rest of your print looks amazing. But you really don't want to be making a graphical identity plate for every size of print. So what should you do? I've done some experimentation and I found that making my logo 1200 pixels wide does the trick. I'll show you in a moment how this logo would work on a print that's going to be four feet by three feet in size. So truly enormous. Let's go to Photoshop and get this started. So here we are in Photoshop. I've opened a black and white version of my logo, which I'm going to use uh, to make the graphical identity plate. Now this is an extremely large image. We can see that in image size. So it's 4,436 pixels wide, which is much too big to use as a graphical identity plate. So we'll just cancel out. Now the best way to proportionately reduce it, in my opinion, is to choose export and then export as. So if we want to see the full size scale, we can see again, 4,436 pixels by 1,212 pixels in height. Our format is PNG and we want to check transparency because it is extremely important that this background uh, be transparent. Then let's set our width. So we'll make that 1,200 and then tap on the tab key to take us to the next field and that will automatically uh, be proportionately reduced to 328. Uh, with resample I always use the default which is uh, bicubic automatic. It works extremely well. With the color space we want to convert it to sRGB just in case it wasn't beforehand and embed the color profile. So at this point I will click on export all then we will save this to the desktop like that and then we'll switch over to Lightroom. So here we are in Lightroom. Now I've chosen this uh, cityscape image uh, which includes a bridge in our city uh, to demonstrate how the graphical identity plate we just made is going to look really good on an exceptionally large print. So we've highlighted the image and now I'll go over to the print module. And here we have the image or part of it showing on the default uh, template. Now I have already made a template that is four feet by three feet in size. So we'll select that. Now I can show you that it really is that big. Uh, in the page setup where we can see it's over 1200 millimeters by 914 millimeters in size. Now to choose our identity plate we click as we learned last time on identity plate and here you can see uh, the default graphical uh, sorry the default text identity plate which you can actually see at the top left of my screen uh, has been put in place. However, we want to use the new graphical identity plate we just made. So we'll click on the little down arrow and come down to edit. Now here we can see that text identity plate 
um, but we're going to change and use the graphical identity plate. I will locate the file, which is out on the desktop, and click on Choose. And then click on OK. Now we can see that the graphical identity plate is in the correct uh, position. So, but if we wanted to, we could move it all around and uh, change the scale or the opacity, but I quite like it the way it is. Now to see what this looks like, I'm going to actually print to file and then we can look at this file in Photoshop. So if we print to file, as it's warning me, it's uh, a truly enormous file, but we will proceed. And I will label this bridge very large and save this to the desktop. And it's preparing the print job. And now it's done. We'll just switch to Photoshop and open that image that we just saved in Photoshop. It's on the desktop. So we have bridge very large and we'll open that. So it looks rather nice, but let's look at it at 100%. So we'll just move down and we can see that at 100%, this is still looking very, very nice. And we started with uh, an image that was 1200 pixels in size, don't forget, for this logo. So we'll come back out and I'll show you that this image is truly gigantic. So you can see it's over 14,000 pixels wide, which is translating to four feet. So there you have it. You have a correctly sized version of your logo, as well as a graphical identity plate that you can use again and again when you want to make prints using the print module in Lightroom. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I make one video per week, uploaded on Wednesday at midday Australian Eastern Standard Time on various aspects of using Lightroom. This has been another Lightroom lightning tip from Roseanne, and I'll see you in my next video.